How's it going, folks? Welcome back to Guernsey. Today is the start of season number... Sorry, two seconds. Editing Jack. Mate, I'm busy right now. I'm recording the new video. Sorry, what? Ryan... Yeah, Ryan Waters, the new left winger. Winger. Yeah, I knew he was right-footed. Do you think I don't look at the preferred footedness of players before I sign them? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play him as an inverted winger. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate you spotting it in the edit, but I already knew that. No, I've got to go, mate. I've got a video to record. Okay, take it. Bye, bye, bye. Ryan, what is his right footed? I'm gonna have to change some things. Happy Monday, folks. I hope you're doing amazing. If you didn't see yesterday's video, and I say yesterday, that's not me misspeaking, we had a transfer special on the weekend. Do go check it out. It was fun. It was a good time. And, well, you might have spotted a new vice captain, Dylan Crow, the final of the new additions that we made, a Park to Prem hero in his own right, a set-piece wizard, and also a man who loves a red card. That bodes well when I want to play him at ball winning midfielder. Now, I mentioned it in the intro, probably worth acknowledging. Waters is right-footed. I didn't realise this man is right-only footedness. I'm actually going to train him to play out on the right wing to see if he can learn it. Because you know what? If he's right-footed, he'd probably be a quite a good right winger. But for us this year, it does mean a bit of a change in plan. He is going to have to play as an inverted winger, which I do actually like in 4-4-2s. And that does mean that outside of him, Matthew Nolan, the Northern Ireland youngster who we picked up, is going to be given some permission to roam. And as a fullback on attack, to be honest, he ticks most of the boxes. Yeah, he's lacking a little bit in off the ball, but for this level, he is an extraordinarily good player. And when I look at this team and I look at what we've got... I'm feeling good about this new season. So just looking at the pre-season preview, we are the favourites to win this league this year and very heavy favourites. I think that's a testament to both the recruitment that we've done, but also the fact that we have moved into a weaker division. Talked about it last episode. This year we are in the Southern League Division 1 South. Shout out to our division's website, by the way, because in real life we can have a look at where all the teams are on a map versus us. Now, of course, as the crow flies, these teams are closer, which is why we've been moved to divisions. In real life, it's very unlikely that Guernsey would be moved to this league because there isn't a particularly practical airport and the teams are a little bit more spread out, which of course adds to travel time. In terms of our local team this year, I think Exmouth is probably the closest as the crow flies. Maybe it's Hamworthy United. I don't know. Either way, they're both local rivals this year. This season, of course, we have seven new players. So I'm kind of excited to see how we get on. Today, we have got games against Mangotsfield. Is it Mangotsfield? I'll be honest, we're venturing into leagues I've never managed in before. Mangotsfield United. And uh, after that, we've got the small matter of Melksham Town in the Southern League Cup. And after that, because I'm a giving guy... Badshot Lee. The third match against Badshot Lee is going to be a grudge match because our head of youth development, Darren Bernard, uh, he used to be a coach at Badshot Lee before I poached him at the start of last year. Alongside the league and the two cups that we're partaking in today, we have also got the FA Trophy this season, although that's not starting for 45 days. With us moving leagues, our board expectations for this year have altered slightly. The board want us to qualify for the playoffs. I want to get promoted this year. That is the name of the game. And of course, you might notice Mark Letizia is still here. There was murmurs of a possible takeover. Right now, he is now enjoying life at the club. And well, I'm enjoying life at the club too, because Financially, after all the pre-season friendlies we got battered in, we actually have £50,000 in the bank balance. And just to recap that pre-season, um, well, we beat the Isle of Man when we played them on Monday. Um, the reality is that we got battered by everyone. But then again, we did play lots of very good teams. Just going to hope that doesn't impact morale too much going into this first game of the season. So the only away game we have today is the first match against Mangotsfield. And I don't want to judge the football club, but when I zoom out the map slightly, Cleave Rugby Club is shown on the map longer than the football club. So maybe this is more of a rugby area of the world. Mangotsfield, by the way, for people wondering, I guess it's an area northeast of Bristol. Not going to pretend to know Bristol particularly well, but it's in the southwest of England. I wanted to take a close look at the stadium, but we can't do that today because Street View only lets me get so close. So as is a customary, we'll go to the closest part we can. I think we're in the right place, everyone. Enjoy a family visit to the ground. Enjoy watching them get battered by Guernsey. I will say, look at this, very, very picturesque stadium looking over the wall, isn't it? Look at that. 
that's proper non-league footy right there. I love it. So for this game against Mangotsfield, we have a full strength team selection, which is a really good spot to be in. Of course, this is the first match in a competitive game, at least, playing this 4-4-2. Kind of interested to see how it gets on. Keep a keen eye on Livingston out on the right-hand side. Added a face to the face pack with his mug on it. Great player. Gibraltarian international. Keen to see how he does out on the right-hand side for us. And of course, Pasal, a man who has signed a three-year deal. A partner in crime for Williams at centre-back. Both players in the media dream 11. I think defensively we should be outstanding this year. If now we concede a load of goals, just ignore the fact I ever said that. I don't want to alarm anyone. There's a kickoff highlight right away. And seeing Dylan Crowe's first touch as the ball, it's, it's giving me a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Of course, when we play at home, we are going to have our massive pitch to work with. We have a very athletic squad, a pretty hard-working squad. With the system that we play, I want to make sure that we're using the entirety of the pitch. Um, and well, we're going to hopefully see some of that in this match here. We have a great team on paper. Now it's about pulling it all together after what I feel like was a really good pre-season in terms of acquisitions, in terms of the whole transition to the new system. It's not an easy thing when you're building a squad in Football Manager to, to go from, say, a formation with no wingers to a formation with wingers. Well, speaking of, of wingers, here's Livingston from one side to the other. Waters, I mean... The wingers nearly made magic happen. Throw in on the far side. Johnson playing right back. Gives it to Livingston. He tries to get in across. It's blocked away. But Dylan Crow is lurking there. Putting the defence under pressure. And while forcing a turnover, Purcell puts in a crunching tackle. But the ball is still with Gianni. One thing I've not mentioned, actually, is the fact that we have a new football manager update for this season. This is my first match with Guernsey in a competitive game in the new match engine. Whenever an update happens to Football Manager, I'm scared that stuff's going to happen differently. Dylan Crow has put it on a plate for Scott Williams. You know what? It can be a little bit different. I've actually changed our set piece this year. So we're doing back post corners because the near post corners weren't doing anything. And I'll tell you what, I feel like I've been rewarded for that change. I know I will now inevitably be asked about the set piece that I'm running. This is the current set piece I've got. The taker is aiming for the back post where we have Williams waiting. We have a striker on the far post. We also have our other centre back marking the goalkeeper. And well, I don't know if this is now a stroke of genius or maybe we've just got very lucky. I've got to be a little bit wary of the counter-attack here, although with tackling like that from Johnson, maybe we need not worry. He gives it to the goal scorer Williams. Now with Dylan Crow Vaughan. Playing that deeper centre mid role for us. Didn't really pick out the most ideal pass there. But we've managed to win back the ball. And immediately is back into the wide areas. It's back with Livingston. He's going to dink it towards Forbes. Options in the middle. Can he pick one of them out? He can. Ryan Waters is there. The man who moved down from Scotland. He's arrived on the sunny coast of Guernsey. And with that, he's given us a two-goal lead. Really, really nice build up play. Kind of nice to see immediately, it feels like, the players in those wide areas making stuff happen for us. Of course, Waters playing as an inverted winger. He's getting into the box a lot there. I'm liking what I'm seeing. There's now a kickoff highlight. I mean, if we get a third goal now, I'm going to, I don't, I'm going to party. I don't know what else. I, what could I do if we get a third here? Answers on a postcard. Williams, the goal scorer, gives it to Vaughan, gives it to Forbes. He's going to play it back inside to Vaughan, who has great passing range. And I'll tell you what, that is not a bad ball there. Livingston in behind, players in the middle, Shatayo's there. And Dauda Shatayo, the Irishman, who we picked up as a striker at the end of last year, didn't score last season after I signed him. It's taken him 28 minutes in this game to find a breakthrough. Through the whole of pre-season and indeed today, we've not really talked about the strikers. Of course, Forbes has been the main goal scorer for us, but Shatayo here, who we picked up at the end of last year, I've got very high hopes for, so great to see him get his first goal in Guernsey colours. Corner here, Dylan Crowe is going to be looking for Williams again at the back post. He can't pick him out on this occasion, it's dealt with. And now it's Boya with the ball for Mangotsfield. We do keep two players back, our right back and left back. That said, we need to get back and, well, try and create a defensive shape of sorts because this is an absolute shambles of a defensive unit right now. Thomas inside, Gianni hits us on the counter-attack. There's someone at home, isn't there, who was busy plugging and playing in my corner routine you saw earlier. Now you're undoing it. Now you're sat thinking, well, maybe it's not so good. I'm beginning to wonder the same. I mean, we've had four goals in the first half. We could have another one here. Dylan Crow over it and... It was never going in, was it? Purcell nods it away. Nolan at left back. We've not really said his name too much. Ball dink forward towards Shatayo. Could he get his second of the game? He's through. He's hit it. The keeper saved it. An impossible angle. And into the side netting. We've been by far and away the better team. They've had two shots on target all match. It's been dominant. Very, very happy with what I've seen. 
One of the easier kind of team talks I think I'm going to do all season. Dylan Crow on a yellow card. As much as I love this man, I'm not going to gamble on it. We're going to bring in Grooms. And you know what? We're going to use this as an opportunity to try the deep line playmaker on defend with the advanced playmaker on support as a centre mid setup. I feel like they are the best two roles for Vaughan and Grooms. Don't quite know how well it's going to function together. There's definitely been years in Football Manager where it was a good combo. Something I would like to trial throughout this year. And well, you know what? We had a great first half. Hold on to the memories of the first half. This second half, I don't think there's been a highlight yet. If you were trying to get out of the car park at Mangotsfield early by leaving the game with five minutes left, maybe hold your horses because there could be more here. They've got the ball, though, in the middle. Haunton. Plays it forward towards Cavell, who's in behind. Is he going to finish it? He is. It's 3-2. Should I be scared? This was very, very simple for them here, wasn't it? I don't want to judge Johnson there, but he has not tracked his man. And actually, to be fair, the finish was quite nice by Cavell. But, well, three minutes left. It's 3-2. I don't want to go more defensive, though. I feel like we've played well this game. Why have I not gone more defensive? There's another highlight. Everyone remain calm. Grooms. Gets it away from danger. They are committing men to the attack now. Both wingers... And wing-backs on either side for them, playing it forward. And I should have I should have gone more defensive. I, sh I should have gone more defensive. Going to be honest, thought the game was over at 3-1 with three minutes left. It's not. There's not much time in this game to change anything too drastically. But you know what? Our two starting wide men can go higher up the pitch. I'm going to give them permission to do it. Vaughan. Get into that center attacking mid position that you play oh so well. Johnson, full back on attack. In possession, more direct. This might be a mistake, but I want to get the win. Five minutes of added time. Is there a late highlight? No. No, there's not. It finishes 3 3. They scored two late chances. I feel like we've got very unlucky today. You know what, though? This game was played on a Friday for some reason. And because of that, we're the only teams that have played. And because of alphabetical order, we're top of the league. Sing it from the rooftops. Let's look at the positives. First game of the season, we've not lost. And we have got so many new players coming into the team. There is going to be a bit of a team cohesion gelling thing as we try and get players together and on the same page and play in this new system. Rome wasn't built in a day. Guernsey, I'm hoping, isn't going to take all season to build. Next game is in the Southern League Cup. We are taking on Melksham Town, a team in our division. We're at home for it, hoping we're going to get a win. When I brought up the map earlier to look at the teams in our league, I mentioned Exmouth, our local rivals. They were trying to poach Frankie Tobin away from me. How bloody dare they? I feel like they want this rivalry. They want me to be annoyed with them. I can't wait to play them in an episode. Get it in your diary and mark it down. The 30th of September is the day we go to war. I guess if that's war, this game against Melksham Town is more of a skirmish. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Now, Scott Williams, who scored the goal for us, our star centre-back. He's a great player, unhappy still about the training facilities. He's actually attracted some interest by Gillingham, Stevenage and Swindon Town. For some reason, the game values him at £0, but with two years left on his current contract... If I am going to sell him, I'm going to ask for a pretty prep penny. Comment question of the day. Let me know what you think down in the comments. How much would you sell Scott Williams for if you were me in our current league? What is the amount of money it would take for me to wave goodbye? The more I look at him, the more I realise he is far too good for our team. Apparently, he's a Vanarama National League player. Board expectation for the Southern League Cup is for us to be competitive. With that in mind, I want to make it as far as we can. The team we take on today are a team in our division. I want to believe it's winnable. And with that in mind, not changing anything since last game. It might sound a little bit bizarre, but besides the whole conceding free goals thing, I actually think we played okay last game. Set piece in a wide area here for Melksham. Loads of players in the box. Very, very narrow. Can we deal with this? I've just realised this is our new pitch. Is this this pitch is too big, isn't it? You can visibly see that this pitch is the biggest allowed. It's massive. Have I have I made an error making my pitch this big? This is a very big pitch for us. I think it suits us, but it it's a bit it's a bit overkill. By a bit, I mean it's completely overkill. But look, we're getting the ball into the wide areas. There's loads of space to run into. Livingston, the Gibraltar International. Probably isn't going to get a call up if he continues to finish like that. Water is wet. Dylan Crow is on a yellow card. Why did I think playing this man as a ball winning midfielder was a good idea? Not sure. Answers on a postcard. Look, we've got the ball. Livingston crosses it in. Shatayo's there. Heads it just over. Johnson at right back for us. I can't get over how big this pitch is. Have I made a big mistake? I feel like this might be an error. I feel so far away from the action. 
Did we move all the stadium and stand bits outwards to fit this all in? They're on the attack. Burns through. He hits it. We're a goal down. I've made multiple mistakes. I've signed a right footed player to play left wing. I've made a massive pitch. I'm not gone defensive. I'm a fraud. That was quite a good finish as well. Right, Dylan Crow, redeem yourself. Crosses it in, back post. Williams is under it. Keeper spills it. Vaughan, Livingston, hits it. That wasn't a million miles away. He's getting closer with these efforts. Maybe the next one will find the target. I want to believe that having scored three goals last game, we've got goals in our locker. We want players heating up. There's no worse position to be in as a manager than when you don't have goal scorers. We showed last episode, or not last episode, last match, that we could get goals. I need to see goals here. Livingston, down the wing, lays it back to Johnson, who's going to cross it back post. Shatayo is under it. Forbes tries to win the second ball, battling away. Vaughan mops up the pieces. Great ball forward to Livingston. He heads it inside. Forbes is there. Welcome back, Tyler Forbes, my friend. First goal of the season for him. Our top goal scorer last year. The British Virgin Islands International catching on fire early this season. It's what you want to see. Vaughan did really well here with this ball across. Livingston, great little header in. And then Forbes just smashes it into the top corner. And I think you can see in situations like that where Livingston is in the wide areas with loads of time and space, the rationale behind the big pitch. Maybe it's going to just take us a little while to get used to it. I realise it's half time and it's 1-1. I've not actually checked what the rules are regarding this competition. Okay, I'm calm. I was worrying about, well, extra time, potentially a replay. No, if the scores are level, we just have a penalty shootout. I mean, I don't want to say they've got lucky. They've had one shot on target all game and it was the get goal that they scored. I think we have been the better team on balance. Williams with it. Dinks it forward towards Forbes. Headed away. Burn with the ball. Gives it away to Dylan Crow though. Now back with Williams. He is going to dink it forward. Shatayo wins the nod down. Forbes here. One on one. Hits it. Crunches the woodwork. Melksham are holding on. But they have now got a set piece. Hopkins is going to whip it in towards the back stick. It goes over everyone. Purcell should be able to mop up the pieces. The left centre back in unfamiliar territory, but a good ball forward there. Livingston, little give and go with Forbes. He was played on side by the right back. One on one. There is so much time and space. They are all slow at the back. I don't know what I'm witnessing. But it is 2-1. Do all their defenders not know the concept of sprinting? Was that them running at full speed? Maybe this big pitch is genius. You know, if all these old non-league players can't keep up, we'll just have all our pacey players get forward. Forbes, Shatayo, plays the ball across. And if that goal is scored against me in FIFA, I'm livid. It was sweaty as hell. I don't care. I don't like Dylan Crow on a booking. He might be having a good game. He's coming off the pitch. Purcell on a booking as well. Deserves his yellow card, but we'll keep him on. Ellis Johnson... It's not been great at right back. So I'm going to bring in Toby down and move Scott Williams to right back. I should go more defensive as well. You know what? We're just going to go to a positive style of play. Lower the tempo, shorten the passing. We don't need to overlap quite as much. Let's just see out this game for the last five minutes. Or maybe let's get another one. Williams now playing right back. He looks so far away on the far side of the pitch. I need binoculars. He's, he's taking his time with the ball in his hand. He gives it to Livingston. Room's now with it. He is going to cross it. To Shatayo. And I'll tell you what, Shatayo's been at the heart of everything we've done in these first two games. Waters picks up the ball. They are committing more and more men to the attack, Belksham. And with that, opportunities are going to arise to get in behind. Forbes is in behind. Can he finish it from here? Difficult angle. It's blocked. Hilton makes an attempted save. And I'll tell you what, he might not have saved it. Give the keeper a 10 out of 10 for the effort there. It's 3-1. It's game over. Anyone else feel just a little bit sad for their goalkeeper here? This effort here. I mean, if he tipped that over, it's one of the great saves in world football. Sadly, won't be remembered in two weeks because went in the back of the net. Full time here. Game finish 3-1. Fizzled out in the end. We killed off the game by just holding on to it that little bit more. You can see, looking at the stats, we were by far and away the better team. Forbes picking up a 9.9. .9. Maybe a little bit slow in the previous game, but in this game here, picking up things where he left off. I say slow last game. He got an 8.0 last game. He played quite well last match. I was also very, very impressed by Livingston out on the right hand side. Got an assist to his name, an 8.4 rating. Hopefully something we can carry into the next match. Next game for us is in only three days time. Bad shot Lee. It's the FA Cup extra preliminary round because apparently they needed two preliminary rounds in the FA Cup. Of course, a competition this that if you go far in, you can make some good money. You can get a bit of hype going and really help the club. With that in mind, it's a competition we're going to be taking very, very seriously. They are a team that play in the league below us. 
hoping this one's going to be straightforward. Okay, final game today against Bad Shot Lee. And bizarrely, there's a temptation to rotate things around. But I think I am going to keep the team unchanged. We do actually get a couple of extra spots on the bench to add, well, a, a tiny bit more depth and coverage, I suppose. Worth noting that, of course, with us having so many pay-as-you-go players where we pay them if they play games, but not otherwise, I don't really want to rotate them into the team because that costs us a bit more money at the cost of, well, playing a week and 11, which I'm not really a fan of doing. So with that in mind, third game in a row, no new injuries, no changes necessary. I am a little bit concerned that the further we go into this season, the more tired my players are going to get because with this massive pitch, there's just a lot more running around to be done. Man to watch out for in this bad shot Lee side is their right back, Max Drake. He is a New Zealand under 17 international who has a rather interesting career of traveling around the world. Um, yeah, he could be a little bit of a threat for us. I say that our team is better than him in every position, so we should be winning this comfortably, but that's not how football manager works. Although maybe today it will work like that, or maybe Mackenzie Lyle's just going to kick the ball straight to them. Williams mops up the pieces, tries to pick out Shatayo. Of course, Shatayo, an absolute mammoth of a man. He is going to win everything in the air when we look to go long. And well, look at him. Look at that run. Plays it inside. Forbes finishes it. Forbes and Shatayo, name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. Bad shot Lee on the back foot, looking to go long. Nolan is under it. I'll tell you what, the left back it didn't play great in our first game of the season. He got a 6.2. He's been a slow starter. Keep an eye on him. And well, as I already mentioned, keep it on Shatayo. It's his third goal of the season. Is that three goals in three for him? I think it might be. That was a really good finish. Nolan winning the header. Vaughan picking it up in a really deep area. Gave it to Waters. Takes that touch. Dinks it forward. Shatayo one touch to take it down, a second to slot it into the bottom corner. Half an hour played, two goals to the good. Half time in this game here, 2-0 up. We have been massively in control. They've had two shots, zero on target. Bad shot by name. Bad shot by nature? That was awful. Let's get into the second half. Now, I've paused things here on this set piece. I don't want to criticise my players. Not sure what this positioning is. For the free, any ideas? What is this? What are we doing? What we're, we did not practice this on the training ground. At least we're not going to be caught out on the counter attack now that they've got the ball. Livingston wins it in a wide area. Can he take it forward? He can. Turns on the afterburners, bursts through, and I'll tell you what: if you'd finished that, it might have been the best goal of today's episode. Of which there's been a hell of a lot of goals. We've had eight goals in three games. Maybe something to happen here. Get your binoculars out. Crows out on the far side. Let's go bird watching. Ball headed away out front of a corner. He had one on the other side. Now he's got one on the near side. Dylan Crow, can he find Williams at the back post? Is this new corner routine overpowered? No, no, it's not. Dylan Crow, free kick. Keepers off his line. Go for the shot, son. He's like 40 yards out. Plays it forward cleverly. That must be Tom Cleverly. He's now found his level. Heads it away. Forbes takes down the ball. Keeps it in play. Options in the middle. Waters is one of them. And he's kicked it straight at the keeper. Dylan Crow in possession, bringing the ball forward, lays it to Shutayo, who plays it forward to Forbes. Lovely link up play yet again. I thought there was about to be a finish at the end of it. I don't know how we've not had more in this game. Maybe another chance here. Ball dinked towards Shutayo. It feels like the game plan today is kick it at head height to Shutayo, hope that he can nod it down to, well, Forbes or anyone else running around him, and maybe we'll score off the back of it. As far as game plans go, I feel like it's been quite highly effective. Maybe another chance here as well. Livingston, options inside, Forbes in acres of space. Shatayo's there as well, and oh my word, don't give it to him at head height. Give it to him on the half volley. He's offside. It was a really good finish too. 15 minutes left in this game. Probably should rest some of the players, given the amount of running around they've done. We're going to bring in Luca Davidson. Of course, Luca's here, um, a player we picked up from the non-leagues of Scotland. He's moved down for £30 a week. I promised he'd be a regular starter. He's not started any of the first three games of the season. Tyler Forbes has been a bit quiet in this game, so you know what? We're going to bring in Ollie Thomas as well. And, uh, well, I'm hoping that with 10 minutes left, there's not going to be a late twist. They're not going to get two late goals. Not that we'd ever concede. Two late goals, of course. We've kept a clean sheet. We've scored two goals. We've been in complete control. And yet somehow, I'm somewhat disappointed about how that's played out. An XG of almost four. On another day, this kind of finishing would cost us. Today, though, is not that day. A really convincing win. And despite not winning that opening league game of the season, I'm pretty happy with how the start of this season's gone. And for winning that preliminary round, £1.12,000. We're earning the big bucks. Going to continue to hype him up. Shatayo scored in every game we played today. He is massive. We are massive. 
I'm feeling good about this year. Yeah, we might not have won the first league game of the season. Yeah, maybe the pitch is a bit big. But you know what? Loads of reasons for optimism. With a fresh look team, with so many new players coming into the squad, wasn't really sure what to expect today. But I think we gave a rather good account of ourselves. Appreciate you guys hanging out as always and watching Park to Prem. We are going to be back tomorrow, same time and place. I'll see you guys then. And until next time, it's me, Jack. I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.